Hi everyone, I'm Ron Kanner and you're watching Out of Zion on God TV. If you're in the United States and you're roaming the cemetery at the famous West Point Military Academy, you might be a little surprised to find Israel's first modern general buried there. Colonel David Mickey Marcus served in World War II. He landed with the Allied troops on Normandy Beach on D-Day. In fact, without any training, he jumped out of the plane with other paratroopers. In addition, he was given the responsibility of assisting the Jewish survivors of the concentration camps. Seeing how his people were treated changed his life. He returned home as a full colonel and highly decorated war strategist. Back in New York, he faced a promising law career. However, the Haganah, the precursor to the Israeli Defense Forces, would soon seek his help. Reluctantly, he left the safety of the U.S. to go serve the cause of a future Jewish nation. He slipped past the British authorities in Palestine as Michael Stone, a wine dealer, and was thus nicknamed Colonel Stone. Initially, he served as a military advisor. When it became clear that he had far more experience in winning real wars than any other of the Israeli commanders, Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion promoted him to be the first Israeli general. But that was a little bit further on. Mickey was fearless, and it was contagious. He had a magnetic personality, an incredible memory, and a tireless work ethic. He wasn't recruited to come himself, but to lure others. When no one else was willing, he volunteered. He said, quote, I may not be the best man for the job, but I'm the only one willing to go. Tipora Porat writes, Two weeks after he arrived in the country, Mickey already knew every significant spot on the map. In that short time, he had learned about the enemy, the type of war, and the best way to tackle it. He had personally been part of the American Army's expansion and growth to meet the problems of World War II and understood the problems Israel would face in establishing an army overnight." End quote. When he submitted his report to Ben-Gurion on March 2nd, he said, the Haganah has educated a type of commander who could easily be converted into a first-rate officer. The man who rescued Jews from Nazi tyranny, Jews who were slowly duped into not resisting until it was too late, was now enamored with this new breed of Jews, as he called them. The problem was organization. Israelis loved to disagree and express their opinion, which was great for a debate in peacetime, but not very good during a war. Soldiers, according to Marcus, needed to know who they reported to and who reported to them. Ben Gurion was so impressed with Marcus that he confessed that he needed 10 more. Some of the commanders were intimidated by Mickey. To slow him down, Yigali Adin had him prepare a training manual, but what he didn't expect was that Marcus, who had put the U.S. manual to memory, would have it finished by the next morning. Those manuals continued to be used for some time by the IDF, unedited. Marcus longed to lead men into battle, but the commanders felt he wasn't ready. He was urging them to stop playing defense and go on the offense to expand the borders of the new state. In April, he returned home to the United States. While in the U.S., he met with General Omar Bradley, who asked him, how long can the Israeli army hold out in defeat? Mickey replied, since we're not an army, but a nation at arms, we'll only be defeated when we're destroyed. That is what so many don't understand. For Israel to lose, the Jews would be slaughtered. There would be no Jewish nation. However, if the Arabs lost, eh, it was no big deal. They still controlled the majority of the Middle East. This is one of the main reasons that Israel won the War of Independence. A man fighting for his life can defeat a much stronger man who doesn't know why he's fighting. In a few weeks, our man Mickey would return to Israel and lead them to victory. Now stay tuned for part two of the Mickey Marcus story. Make sure to go to God.tv so you never miss an episode 